Caro was originally a small village and then an abbey was located there around 1146. In 1416, a dispute as to whether Caro was actually part of Norwich or Norfolk confirmed it was part of Norwich. We're going to begin and end at this corner of the football ground and then follow the original route of Caro Road to the first route of crossing, then go into Caro Hill and return via the wilderness and the second Caro Bridge. The original route of Caro Road was behind the stadium and following that route would have taken you past the malt house seen here after it was used for that purpose. You can see the stadium's floodlights behind. We continue past this conveniently parked van. I wonder if he knows he's parked on the original highway. And we're aiming for that gap between the two apartment blocks ahead. The next obstacle on this original route is a fence. But fortunately my agility isn't tested as there's a gap and we can continue along the first Carrow Road towards that rather overgrown area that we can see ahead. That overgrown area marks the northeastern side of the first Carrow Bridge and if we just step to the side of it you can see the remains of the bridge on the other side. And this is what the first Carrow Bridge looked like. This is a picture from 1935 of the discontinued Carrow Bridge and this is what that looks like today. We've now crossed over to the other side of the river and can see here a plaque which commemorates the site of that first Carrow Bridge. It had been built in 1810 and was replaced in 1923. We're now going to continue in this direction and cross King Street and then go up to Carrow Hill. I can only assume that Noel Carr didn't visit Carrow Hill as it's pretty steep. This map from 1886 suggests it was actually seen then as a continuation of Carrow Road. Carrow School was built in 1864 by Coleman's for the children of employees. By 1899 it had transferred to the Norwich Education Authority and closed in 1919 with children going to a new school at Lakenham. Near Carrow School this plaque marks the site of the killings of Norwich's first civilians in the Second World War. At this point we'll turn off Carrow Hill to the right and descend via the Wilderness which was one of Norwich's earliest pleasure gardens. The Wilderness was created in the mid 18th century and the footpath we follow down goes along its edge. At the bottom it joins King Street near the second Carrow Bridge. Creation of a new bridge required the sharp turn on King Street that we see today. Before redevelopment of the area, a pub was on each corner, the Kingsway on the left and the Jolly Molsters on the right. The bridge was built in 1923 and is part of the city's ring road, so being regularly raised for river traffic caused significant congestion in the city. Today the surrounding area has been redeveloped for residential and leisure purposes. Crossing the bridge and looking back towards the King Street Junction looked like this in 1934 and like this in 2021. At this point the main road now diverts slightly to form Coblenz Avenue with the original diversion for Carroll Road hardly used now. I have heard that if the football club wants to increase the stadium's capacity, they can build over this part of the road. Looking back towards the bridge, the original line of the diverted Carrow Road is still fairly clear, indicated by the trees, with Coblenz Avenue on the right of the picture. This 1926 map shows how the diversion of Carrow Road using two 90 degree turns created a rectangle that provided a football ground for Bolton and Paul and a clubhouse and would become the home of Norwich City Football Club in 1935.